Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to ask myself, was that haul worth it? I'm going to take a look back at the products that I purchased in September of 2021. I'm going to go through them. I'm going to let you know what I've been using, what's good, what's not. Um, usually I would pair this video with monitoring my beauty purchases, which is basically where I show you what I've purchased in the recent month and why I purchased it. Um, but I haven't actually bought anything. I didn't buy anything last month. And actually, I did buy something this month. It's not here and it's not going to be here for ages. Um, I'll talk about that when it comes in. Um, and maybe I'll touch on it a little bit when I'm talking about other products in this video. Because uh, I guess... I guess prepping for this video sort of sparked that purchase, which we'll get to it. I am filming this video a little bit earlier than I usually would, but that's because I'm traveling later this month and I'm not going to be traveling with these items and I thought it would be more fun to sit down and be able to show you the products than just talk about them in a video and have to put photos up and yeah, you get it. But what I want to start with is actually some products from Dabonets. Now, a little bit of background on why I purchased the products I'm about to talk about is because during the winter of 2021, I was dealing with really bad scalp issues. Um, I had dandruff that I believe was um, caused by dryness, and I believe that dryness was caused from being on isotretinoin. Um, it appears now, after being on that medication, that I naturally have dry skin and in the winter months it is extreme. Last year was really bad, this year was a little bit better but I think it was more a little bit better because I was more prepared and knew how to deal with it a little bit better. So Hopefully over the years um, maybe my skin will balance out or maybe I will just you know, become a lot more seasoned at um, managing the issue. Whatever, it is what it is. So, while I was going through these uh, scalp issues last year, I had really, really bad dandruff, like it was bad. Um, and as many of you will know, one of my very, very close friends is my hairdresser, and she obviously sees the issue. I go to her when I have questions or I'm looking for advice or you know want to p run ideas past her and um, she was I guess on the lookout for products that might help me. Now by the time I got these products I'd actually found something or maybe it was a little bit after I'd got these products I found something that kind of like flicked a switch with the dandruff issue so these products haven't got a lot of use. Um, but I will, I'll take you through them. And also, just in case what I just said is making you wonder what the product was. Um, it was Davinez Curl Cream range. So they have a, a cleansing cream um, that I used. Uh, and that really helped to rehydrate my scalp. However, it made my hair really like <sighs> stringy. <laughs> um, it wasn't ideal, but it, it helped to sort of um, kickstart the repairing process of having that issue. So the products that I ended up with were the Natural Tech Purifying Shampoo from Davinez. This didn't get a whole lot of use. Um, I was kind of using like this and the Curl product um, simultaneously, but I did enjoy this. It was certainly not something that I was willing to be like, no, uh, you know, I'm going to get rid of it because I won't use it. I will definitely use it. Um, but also I do have a lot of um, sort of dandruff related products in my, <laughs> in my stash now. Um, and this year, I actually, I probably would have reached for this, but I ended up with the Maria Nilla um, head and hair heal shampoo i think it's called um i talked about it in my beauty recap earlier in the month um and that stuff is i mean it's designed for like 
hair growth, I believe hair retention, scalp health, and dealing with dandruff. And that stuff is banging. Like, it's really, really, really good. So, I haven't... I did deal with dandruff issues, um, sort of earlier in winter, but once I started using that shampoo and conditioner duo, like, it's not really been an issue. So, this hasn't seen a whole lot of use since last winter when I first got it, uh, but I do like the product. Then I have the Elevating Scalp Recovery Treatment. Um, so this is a spray-in product. Uh, you can see it there. It has a very like liquidy uh, formula. I'm not really sure I can show you. Maybe you can see it moving in the bottle. There's something walking on the roof. I know it's a bird, but it sounds like an elephant. So if you hear that, apologies. I can't make the birds go away. Um, anyway, this also didn't get much use. Maybe I used it once or twice. I really don't know what I feel about this product because it has sat to the wayside. Um, the one other product that I got was the Elevating Massage Oil. This was the one that I was most interested in and the one that I used the most and probably the one that I have like the most thoughts about. So this is a massage oil for the scalp and the hands. Now I'm not going to use this stuff on my hands. I'm not that bougie. Like just give me a cheap but effective hand cream from you know chemist warehouse or priceline it's fine um but it's also designed for um like doing scalp massages and hydrating the scalp it is an emulsifying oil so i was like you know this could be a fantastic product for you know getting some hydration into the skin protecting the scalp before i shampoo it um and the fact that it emulsifies means I'm not going to have to wash my hair two or three times to get it out of my hair. Unfortunately, it doesn't emulsify very well in the hair. Now, when it's on the skin, it emulsifies fine and it washes away quite clean. But I think because scalp structure or skin structure and hair structure are different, um, the emulsifying like the way it emulsifies works different on the different surfaces and this just is so difficult to get out of the hair i think when you're dealing with dry scalp and you're trying to get moisture into it it's it's really really difficult because a lot of the things that you put directly on your scalp then weigh down the hair and they make it look greasy and you know, make it look limp. It makes it look like you haven't washed your hair or you need to wash your hair. So it's a really um, difficult thing to deal with. And I definitely think over the last two years of playing with different products and trying to find ways to rehydrate the scalp but also keep the hair looking fresh, essentially, um, is you need to find a shampoo and conditioner system that works for you. And, you know, some shampoos and conditioners that are designed for dealing with dry or oily dandruff, um, they work for some people and not for others. So I think, you know, trial and error is the big thing that you need to do. Um, but that can be expensive and frustrating. So if you're dealing with that, I get it. I understand. I've been through it as well. Went through it last year, went through it this year, went through it while I was on isotretinoin. Like it's been a battle for years for me. So I can relate to stuff like that. Um, and I would definitely say for me, like I've, you know, I used head and shoulders, um, which can be effective, but I, it's not, it's not great for hair health. Um, especially if you like, if you have colored hair, like it's just no go. You don't, you don't use head and shoulders, um, when you have colored hair because it's going to strip the color. Um, and I know that because sometimes I use it to purposely try to fade color faster when Madeline and I want to change up my hair color. Um, but if you have, you know, uh, normal uncolored hair it can be fine for you but also if you're then dealing with like 
brittle or dry or fine hair, it's really not ideal. And although it can be effective for a lot of people, it's too harsh for a lot of people. So personally, I have found that um, the more expensive, you know, salon type brands are better. Uh, and for me, Davines is one of them, but the Maria Nilla has, has been a real winner for me at this point. So there's that. I'm definitely holding on to all of these products. Um, I think there will be room in my future for me to use them and explore them more. Um, and I think I would have got more use out of them last year had I got them earlier in winter. Uh, but because I got them, you know, when winter was ending and we were coming into spring and my scalp seems to balance out in the warmer weather anyway, uh, they just didn't get a whole lot of use. So there's that. My next product is the Pharmacy Sweet Apple Clean Makeup Meltaway Cleansing Balm. So many of you who've been watching this series over the years will know about the great... 2021 obsession with the pharmacy cleansing balms that was my life. Um, I bought so many of these and I love them. I really, really love them. I have not got a lot of use out of this product or the other pharmacy cleansing balms that I purchased last year, mostly because I have been trying to focus on using up the cleansing oils in my stash that like I wouldn't want to purchase again. Um, I kind of, you know, try and focus on those, finish them up, and then I can enjoy the things um, that I know I would buy again. Now, I'm, I'm, was this one limited edition? I think it was originally. Maybe they made it permanent later. I think it was a quite a popular scent. Regardless, this product or like the pharmacy cleansing balms in general are something that I would buy again and again and again in the future. Um, there's a good chance that this will be like my holy grail always have it around cleanser uh, because I just love it. It's either going to be this or the Shuamora cleansing oil. I have no regrets purchasing this product and I will get around to using it eventually. I've just not used it as much as I would if I didn't already have 50 million cleansers. Let's face it. I bought cleansers when I didn't need cleansers last year. It is what it is. Um, the next items, ugh, yeah, everything that's coming up now is nail related. I had an obsessive nail month in September of 2021 and um, I did this year as well. We'll talk about it. So I picked up the Sally Hansen Instant Nail Polish Remover in the acetone free version. The reason why I purchased this was because I had tried the Instant Nail Polish Remover in the non-acetone version and I just loved the simplicity of it. It was fantastic. Um, however, I have nail enhancements. I use a gel overlay to strengthen my nails so I can grow them uh, nice and long. And uh, the acetone version would, over time, it would soften the edges of the enhancements, which makes them... Uh, like it screws up the structure of them basically they they lose their um, integrity so uh, I was like well I want to see if they have an acetone free version they did and I purchased it and I really enjoyed it I definitely still saw it like screwing with the like the edges um, usually it would sort of soften the uh, the edges around like my cuticle and that you know fucks up the structural integrity of the um, enhancement which is not ideal you don't want to do that when you have um, you know enhancements that are there for strength essentially um, so what I did do was once it had sort of got pretty gross um, I thought I, I want to like reuse the packaging so I went and bought a kitchen sponge and I put it inside and then I put in um, some acetone free nail polish remover and look it works it doesn't work as well I, I won't try it again the type of sponge is not the same as the type of sponge in this one so this one just has like a really nice soft sponge with a um, kind of like a cross 
cut into it so you can just pop your finger in there and turn it around and it takes off your nail polish um, and this sponge is too firm and stupid and doesn't work uh, potentially there's other sponges on the market that I could get to you know make it work but yeah this didn't really work out for me uh, it's still usable I am I'm not I'm not gonna get rid of it yet I'm gonna wait until the sponge is like it's done and then I will um, I probably pull the sponge out and maybe see if I can find another sponge to be honest um, the idea of like I mean the packaging is recyclable the sponge is not um, but yeah I'm like I just I kind of if I can reuse something I kind of like to um, what I tried with this one and this is you know this is nothing to do with the purchases because I didn't purchase this one last year I ha had this from PR ages ago um, I pulled the sponge out and I like squeezed out the excess uh, nail polish remover and nail polish gunk which was disgusting and I don't think I'll ever actually do this again because it was a nightmare um, I kind of tried to clean it a little bit with some extra nail polish remover um, just to get the excess uh, nail polish out of it um, and then I put the sponge back in and I put in a bit more like nail polish remover and uh, it works to a degree but what I found was I've used like glitter nail polishes and stuff in there and the glitter has started to like break down the sponge and you know tear it up a little bit so the sponge has also lost its integrity um, so I don't know I I think potentially this just uh, isn't it's not like ideal for I I want this to be the miracle that it it could be in my head but it's just not um, the acetone free version still breaks down my nail enhancement um, the like the delivery method is fantastic and I love it and I want to be able to use it but um, unless I can find a sponge that is perfect for like putting in here and refilling it with a different non acetone nail polish remover um, I yeah I can't really see it working um, also this one the non acetone one when you buy it fresh and new um, it smells so strongly wow sorry a curtain rod just decided to slip over um, <laughs> not one from the roof one that was just waiting to be put up um, it smells so strongly of vinegar it, like takes my breath away so yeah I don't know if I would repurchase these in the future I feel like I want to continue to experiment with them and see if I can sort of find that like really happy medium um, of being able to replace the sponges and using um, a nail polish remover that doesn't mess with my um, enhancements as much but that remains to be seen something else I purchased was the Sally Hansen instant cuticle remover um, I have used you know about this much of it it is a huge bottle it's nearly 30 mil um, it would last a lifetime I don't think it needs to be that big considering like the amount of space you use it on and how often it gets used um, I do think that this is fairly effective it definitely helps to soften the cuticle that's like really stuck to the nail plate um, but I'm not sure that I love it so much that I would purchase it again I think I'll you know continue to use it but also if I saw a cuticle remover and now it's raining thanks Melbourne love ya if I saw a cuticle remover on the market that was just like amazing um, I would probably purchase it and be willing to like just declutter this but for now it's okay um, it does work it's just not like anything super super exciting and special the last things that I purchased in September of 2021 was an excess of brush on builder gels now this is the product that I use to uh, do my nail enhancements which is essentially like 
it's an overlay over my natural nail and it's just there to give them strength otherwise I can't grow them this long they're very brittle um, now brush on builder gels if you're not familiar with what they are they come in a bottle that looks like a nail polish um, they are set with a UV or LED lamp you they won't cure on their own they absolutely need a lamp um, and a lot of them nowadays are soak off so you don't need a drill a nail drill to remove them back in the day most of the like brush on products that we saw similar to this you couldn't soak them off I've made that mistake before and literally had to like grow the nail out like file it down and then grow the product out over months and months and months it was so annoying um, but nowadays we've got the soak off version and I love them I've been using them for years and I swear by them it is an absolute staple in my nail routine the original builder gel that I started with was from the brand IBD um, and it was a clear one and I just picked it up at um, like one of the uh, beauty trade stores that I go to to you know find cotton pads and this and that and all that jazz and they had it there and I was like you know what I'm gonna give this a go so I gave it a go fell in love with it it was amazing and I had been talking about it here and there on my YouTube channel and people were like I can't get the IBD like it's not around here do you have any other recommendations and I didn't because I hadn't tried any other brands I just sort of stuck with the one that I knew and loved um, so I went on a hunt to try some others now I wanted to do it on a budget and I wanted them to be fairly easy to access so I jumped on Amazon first and I found well I found this which was the IBD but in the cover pink and my um, beauty trade store they didn't have the cover pink at that time they do now um, so I picked up that one to give it a go and I love it it's absolutely fantastic beautiful color and it's actually the one that I reach for more often over the clear one uh, the reason why is because I can use this and then not have to put anything over the top if I do the clear I feel like I have to um, paint my nails because sometimes the condition of my nails underneath is just really not that great they are very brittle and you know you can see that um, the cover pink is fantastic for like a one and done finished look so I love that and if I want to I can still put a nail polish over the top um, another brand that I found on Amazon which I was look my expectations were low but I was hopeful however it turns out like they're not that great um, they're, they're okay but we'll get into it um, they're from a brand called a Melii I don't know if that's how you pronounce it anyway they came in a pack of six and they were all nude colors and it was fairly cheap I think it was like it was less than $30 I'm sure um, and I just dropped one who cares okay mum interruption I can't remember what I was talking about uh, anyway these were nude shades which I really really wanted builder gels in nudes because I kind of wanted to be able to do that one and done thing which I do with the IBD now um, so I purchased these very excited to try them out issue was um, they're really really sheer so you need a lot of it to make it look um, like it has the like nude color um, but also the problem with that is these when you're doing a nail like mine where it's a stiletto type nail the structure that you need to build on the nail is not even across the whole nail so you need to build an apex to make it strong um, where like the the free nail meets like the nail bed um, it's thinner down near the cuticle it's a little bit thinner like at the tip of the nail so you have an uneven amount of product and because of the sheerness of these that makes the color look funny and uneven um, also what I found with these was it is 
so difficult to remove so 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 difficult to remove like the soaking with the acetone oh my god just like hours and hours and you still have to like scrape it off the nail which I'm not into because it damages the nail plate and my nails are already weak enough they don't need to be like damaged further so I didn't love these um I have held on to them kind of with the thought like I'd like to try them a little bit more um and with like different base products because some like some base products can help with the removal of products like this um but I haven't gotten around to doing it so that tells you that usually when I'm doing my nails I'm doing them at a time where I'm like I desperately need to do my nails and sometimes I just don't want to rock the boat I just want to use what I know what I can rely on um, and that's why I often reach for the IBD so these just haven't haven't got used yet um, well they've been used but not since um, originally testing them out now the next ones that I found these are actually from an Australian brand and I thought you know for my Aussies out there who want access to this type of product I want to test these ones out um, they're from color me pretty now I've purchased gel polishes from color me pretty before really really enjoyed them so I was excited and kind of confident that these would be good I picked up four shades again they're all like nude shades they're all soak off builder gels these ones are great because the color is a lot more opaque but what I found with these is they're really soft these seem a bit like a hybrid of a like gel nail color and a builder gel mixed together the when they cure they don't cure as hard and firm as these products do um, which means that if you're running around with nails this long and you like catch it on something or like you know uh, one of the big things for me is when I'm like um, opening a, a door handle that isn't like just a round knob or like a you know one of these ones well you know what I'm talking about like a door handle that's attached to a door um, I'll open it and then when I go to release it my nails actually catch um, on the door and they can bend essentially um, and that often results in an extremely painful experience the nail can like split down um, like in the quick of the nail it's excruciating and it, it's dangerous like you can you can do damage um, you can get infections like it's, it's not good we do not want that um, so I don't like a soft gel I always intended to revisit these and see if uh, curing them for longer would result in a, a firmer product but I haven't done it because I've been too scared um, and also like the reason why I use these products is because they're so long lasting and they're very low maintenance the the biggest maintenance about them is the removal and the application it does take me a really long time doing it at home on my own and I just have not felt like this year I've had the time to experiment with it like I don't want to put this on you know take the half a day to take it off and put it all back on it doesn't really take me that long but you, you get what I'm saying I don't want to take that amount of time and then a couple of days later I have to do it all over again um, so I haven't I haven't revisited these but I still want to it's just a matter of you know finding the right time to be able to do that because we're all busy I'm sure you get it so while I was prepping for this video and you know seeing oh I have to pull out all of my nail stuff um, I I got a little bit inspired uh, and I was sort of 
hunting on the internet for nail things and there was a few things that you know I'd seen that were trending and I thought oh, I, I wouldn't mind trying that um, and it resulted on in me making a born pretty is it born pretty yeah I think it is um, nail order of a, a bunch of things um, all very cheap I, I kind of like to um, explore <sighs> new nail stuff with cheaper brands before I commit to the more higher end brands. Um, there are situations where I'll just sort of jump straight into the deep end with products like this and I definitely think that the um, you know the salon quality brands they're just they're superior most of the time but not all of the time. Um, so yeah I, I made a little born pretty order just to like you know try some stuff out and if any of it is a, a great love then I will hunt for similar products but from um, more established or what I would consider you know maybe more reliable or better quality brands. If you guys can remember your purchases from this time last year feel free to let me know how you're going with them were any of them winners or fails let me know your thoughts um, or even let me know what you purchased this month and why you chose to pick it up and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!